call the council meeting for April 5th, 2016. Uh, together, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, call it to order, I guess. Is there any additions to the agenda? So we out. Alex, prayer. give a yeah. blessing. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with all those who have been elect and who have been chosen to guide the affairs of our city to help uh, maintain all of the services all of the necessities and all of the benefits for those who are employed by, by them. And we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you would guide them in their affairs and help them to achieve reproachment in any difference of opinion that may occur within our city. And this we ask, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may be blessed and favored as a small town, and that at this time with many needs and with uh, the desires to prove ourselves even in this time of difficulties, able to surmount all of them, even as some immediately and are continuing to achieve. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Alex. Okay. Administration Superintendent opening sewer pond sealed bids. Administration Superintendent approval of purchase of Great safe for the electrical department. Fire department extended open burn through end of April. New business grant unreal solid waste collection update. Uh, anybody have any citizens uh, additions to that agenda? With them for? I have uh, I have an addition. Uh, I think we need to put it under uh, probably uh, sales tax. Uh, maybe a. Well, I just need to discuss something to, to, uh, about the sales tax or get the bond for a particular item that I was brought to my attention. Yeah, I think. Yeah. All right. Did entertain a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Four, four, one, or five and zero again. I got to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, consent agenda. Any any citizen comments? Yes, no. Okay, consent agenda. Approve minutes for the regular meeting on three fourteen of two thousand sixteen. Approve minutes for a special meeting on three thirty of two thousand sixteen. Approve appropriation ordinance four five two thousand sixteen. The amount of ninety four thousand seven hundred fifty one dollars fourteen cents. General Fund, 186077, Jubilee, $42. Library, 921.83. Sewer Store, Storm Sewer Utility, $3.34. Solid Waste Collection was $9,544.44. Sewer Utility, 322.12. Water and Light, 63,171.61. And System Capital Project was $2,085.03. Renew Mock Service Partnership contract expiring on June of 24, 2017 for the amount of $2,386. And I assume that's cleaning the city hall? That no, right? that's not the cleaning one. That's one of Corey's. I don't know what it hack is. service is. Do you got it? It is. He brought it. He gave it to me. I think it's with the water department. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a treatment plant. The treatment plant, yep. Field contact. He said every, every, all of that's for the, the nitrate plant. Mm -hmm. I think it's for like their testing mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. Is this actually supposed to expire in June 24, 2016, or are we trying to renew a contract a year in advance? Probably 2016. Uh, start date's 25 June of 16, yeah. end date is 24 June of 17. And this yeah. must be so if, yeah. renewing yeah. it for June. Well, this one expires June 24th of 2016, yeah. not 17. This one yeah. here starts the 25th of June on the 16th. To be like it's, uh, Is that all the testing and all that other mm -hmm. stuff? Is all that's yeah, about, all that's that. all that's about. So fine, you can't read it. Here you go. That's it there too. <coughs> so be it in a second. All in favor? Um, okay, Police Department. Adam uh, is not here again. Yeah, Adam had to go home ill today, so okay, he is. He asked if you guys would table that executive session until the next meeting. Okay. Do I need a motion to do that? Or you guys in favor of that? Or take it off and let it put back on. Yeah, just skip over. Yeah. Just skip over. Fire department report. Don't look like we've got um, Michael here. Yeah, Michael, um, we've had a lot of requests for the burn permit to be extended because the month of March was so windy. Um, I checked with Mike and he didn't have a problem with it. So I just need to know if you guys, you know, if you guys can move so we could extend the open burn permit. If you guys want to do that till the end of April, if you want to do it for another couple of weeks. Um, that's all he was going to ask. To burn any time. I mean, all they got to do yeah. is come and get a permit anyway well, for that weekend or whatever. The open bid, the open, the open burn, burn keeps them from buying a permit. Keeps them from buying a permit. They just have to call dispatch, and as long as it's not too windy and that they follow all those um, guidelines on that you guys set, then they can just go ahead and burn. They just call dispatch. What they have to do now is they have to come into the office and they have to pay for the permit. Is, uh, is it in the countywide burn restriction? No. Mm -mm. I thought we should have been that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. That's probably right. So if you guys are in favor of that, I just need somebody to move to extend it. And how late, how far you guys want to extend it. You might give me any guidance? No. Marshall? He said he didn't care until the end of April. You're going far, possibly. Well, that's, I don't care. It's the end of April, then. That's fine. Yeah, so moved. Have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Five and a little. Administration. City Clerk. Okay, so um, with the special meeting with Greg Wright, you guys wanted to schedule another one, so he got back with me. And he is available April 12th. And the twenty six to do those. What time? Um, he didn't say he didn't say it mattered what time. So really, those are the dates he can come in the evening time. Um, personally, I probably what recommend the twelfth. So in case something comes up and we need to move it to the twenty six, then we can do that. But that's just my opinion. So we don't have a council meeting. No, yeah. so it'd, it'd be, be next Tuesday. it'd be next, next Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. <laughs> and that's a, you know, it would be at seven. Yeah, whatever you guys would want it to be. Seven, seven, you You're busy, Steve. I was going to say, the later the better. That's all I can say. Okay. Seven work? Put the time on it, and I'll be here. He's just going to have the same special agenda. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's just going to go over. Um, the council wanted him to look at different scenarios with the interconnection standards and the net metering. So that's what he did. So he's just going to come back and talk to them about those different standards and what he found. And then it could be that they're going to want to modify those that policy. Okay. So it's the 12th, 7th, 12th at 7th, yeah. I'll get that right now. Okay. 
Um, then, a couple weeks ago, we had a consultant from GIS Solution, that's the mapping system that you guys were kind of interested in. Um, we found out that it's going to cost around $9,000 to do it. The estimated price was, was $25,000, but because the county has most of the, the initial mapping layers and they're going to share them with us, then she knocked off that $20,000. Um, Corey really thinks it's good and so does Jeff. She is going to be here May 3rd to propose her proposal to you guys. Um, she didn't know if you guys, if some of you guys wanted to meet earlier, you guys couldn't all meet together. It would have to be two and two. Um, if you guys wanted to meet earlier that day and kind of run through it and if you guys had questions or if you just want her to come to the council meeting and she just present to all of you guys. She's, she's flexible that day, so she could come all day if you guys wanted to come. But if you guys do it, you have to do it two and two. You guys can all come together. Is this the uh, the map that's going to show the manways, Correct. water lines? Yep, power, it's going to map plan. everything. And then what you guys can do, you can actually attach work <coughs> orders to it too. So if someone would call in and we would say, hey, you need to go to this house, we could put that on there. That's going to send in information. To one of the guys when they get there they click on it and it'll say what they do and then they can add what they did and the whole history would be there you can attach different things like you could say what kind of meter it is what kind of valves on it what kind of line it has you can put all these layers on there it also helps set a value to all the stuff in the city so in case heaven forbid something would happen and we would have to deal with FEMA it would already be done and valued so if someone time. was um, working on a particular home mm -hmm. and they added parts, they could have a parts list on Correct. there with the, with the total on that? Yep, okay. yep, and it'll show, show what kind of valve, like if they had to go and switch it out. The other thing that's nice is like if you, right now there's really no way of tracking all the work orders. So we could send Ruben to one house for our water kind of thing and then on that same block he could go you know someone else could go to another house and on the same block someone else can go to the third house well this will show that we hit all these houses on the same water line so maybe it's not the house maybe it's that water line and this information will be stored at um, this company's uh, yeah, on their uh, servers on their servers they have okay. like four or five farm servers okay so they back everything up and they back everything up. Okay. Yep. Okay. And the proposal she's going to give you is going to include all the equipment that we would need and the software and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But instead of 25, you said it's more it's like right. nine? Nine. Yep. Because um, Carl had the initial layer. If they had to build the initial layer, like get all the ground and everything in there, then you were looking at like 25 but because Carl has that pictometry meter and has all the initial information and is willing to share it with the company then that's why it cut cut it down to we already had budgeted 000. in for the full amount anyway didn't we? I think so I think so oh, I just yeah also didn't this help us on insurance because it shows all the poles oh, yeah. all the Correct. transformers right. if we'd have a tornado yeah, it's gonna, yeah it if is you and, heaven forbid something like Greensburg happened here if you had all this on the computer then it would it would show it all. So you're not, like when they come in to help set new lines, you wouldn't be guessing where the line is. You would just show them the map and say, this is where it is, GPS, it should be right here. And then they can just go right in there and, and put it back in. I think, if you guys remember right, I think we got on board with the county on that. Uh, was that a couple years ago? Now that's the pictometry. Ago. Oh, this is not the this same. Is, this is something totally different. Oh. It's like the pictometry, but that will lead you're, you're in, hooked into the pictometry for at least three, two more years. The bad thing about the pictometry is that we cannot, we cannot modify the layers. If, if they want to add something, if we want to change something, we have to submit it to the county, to Marilyn. She goes in and she makes all the adjustments. This program will allow, like Corey or I, or you can even set it up for Jeff to do it for a period of time, or if you want him to do it all the time, they can actually go in and we can make the adjustments. We run it. We we control it. I thought the only mapping deal we approved so far, or even budgeted for, was that picked on. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. okay. So yeah, none so of this, this is budgeted then. Well, 
Jeff says that he has it in his capital outlay. Okay. So she's going to be here May 3rd. And, and I didn't know if you guys want, if some of you guys wanted to ask her other questions or if you guys just want to do it and have her come. Just so this to the is council. totally different than... It's totally different than what, Cor what Coral has over at the county. Well, I thought all that was supposed to go on that when they headed to Canada. That's why I understood it too, and I still thought we could add layers to that. Yeah, we cannot. To where we could go in and mark all our manholes, mark all our poles, everything, if we wanted to. No, you would have to, you, you have can to, that mark it. That all had to be done before they took the pictures. Oh, is that yeah. what Mel dropped? Yeah, that's, yeah, when he was talking yeah. about that, right. Mm -hmm. And so now they can go and they... This is and just they... using basically GPS. They walk right. to a pole or to a meter or yep. to a manhole and they hit a button and it marks it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're bound into that pictometry for another two years. Yeah, two more installments. Yeah, I got the bill the other day for the second installment. And that's running sixty-five hundred dollars a shot. It is. Yeah, I think it's that thought it was something like that. It's pretty high. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was pretty high. total deal was like twenty-four thousand. Um, a year, it's twelve hundred dollars a year for that pictometry. You got March sixteenth and so March seventeenth. So what's Corey say about this? Corey really, <clears throat> Corey really likes the the GIS. He likes it. I'm sure that's what he would tell you if he I was said here. we just all meet that night and have her there. We just have her there. Yeah. That's what I thought, but yeah, she had not, thrown that out. Supposed to do that. That way she's not repeating herself four right. times. Yeah. 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 And she said when she brings that proposal, um, we had asked her to do it with the equipment, like for the guys to walk around with and everything. So that, that way we need the equipment was going to work with the software and we wouldn't have to go and buy other equipment. So the proposal she's going to give you um, will have the equipment in it as long as, as well as the software. And that's going to be around at 9000 North? It's around 9000 Something like that. That's a one-time deal or is it? No, there's a yearly cost too, but I, the yearly cost I think is like the pictometry about 1200 I'm not positive, but... Is that just for all the updates on it? Then? Yeah. Yeah, but the, and then that gives you, of course, that she, she'll tell you, that'll give you the support system that you need if someone needs help, if you need the software would go down. Um, we, you know, we have some more questions for, like, what if we decide to go with a different company and it's all stored on their server? Do we get the data or does the data go with them? I mean, there's some more questions that Corey wants to ask her. I was just letting you guys know that she's coming May 3rd and that she came down and met with us. So then the next thing on the agenda, you guys remember for you guys that were here on the 30th, you guys switched insurances with and went with MPR and KMAT. With KMAT, you guys have to pass a resolution to accept the bylaws and everything, and you guys should have a copy of that resolution in there. So that is what I need, is I need someone to accept that. Um, we... I. We heard back from Kent because there was one portion that we hadn't got estimate estimates in on yet, and so that brought your savings. It should be about forty thousand a year in a savings, in an insurance savings. Troy, you wasn't here uh, when they called that meeting. Did <laughs> uh, you talk to anybody about it? A little bit, sure. Okay. Uh, it, what it amounted to was uh, first Kansas or first. Bank and whatever the name yeah, is. Yeah, Kent works with First Bank. Uh, they put a, a pool together. It was in a pool, a municipality pool, and the savings on the total deal was about $34,000. Between that and <coughs> eight, 360. Right. Okay. Any other discussion? To let's see which one of these is it? It's to approve resolution 21606. To approve resolution number 2016-04. 06. 06. Yeah, 04 is down in the business. 06. I'm sorry. So moved. Second. All in favor? Five and one.
just keep going. Oh, Corey. Yeah. All right, Corey. Yeah, is Corey here? No, no. he's not here. Um, Corey's <laughs> Corey couldn't be here because unfortunately he had a death in his, of him and his family, and he had to go back to Minnesota, so he's going to be gone the rest of this week. Um, he wanted, you guys, we had to open the sewer pond, the pasture lease for the sewer pond. And there's one. We only got one bid? I think there's two. I think we got another one. Oh, yeah. We got two. When he first showed it to me, we only had one. And then he just read the bids. First one is sewer pond purchase. Uh, looks like I pay the sum of five hundred twelve dollars to graze, graze the pasture. From Steve Frank, with a contract here that needs to be signed. Any, I'll let you guys read that if you want to read it. And the other one is Clayton Road Armel, 512 North Pearl. I am placing a bid on the sewer ponds for $250. And I assume that's a, a season. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll pass these around. Let you guys look at it. And this one's pretty much what the contract would be. Because I think you guys had Steve last time. Did he have it last year? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion to go with <coughs> Steve Frank again for the $512. Motion on the table. Here, second. Second. All okay. favor? Okay, so the last thing Corey wanted to talk to you guys about was, it's, and I hope I pronounced this right, but I'll pass it around. It's a break safe system, and so what it does is they, when the electrical people go up to the, up in the pool, they're going to put this on and they're going to hook it up to both wires and it breaks the electricity for that one transmitter so they don't have to take the whole street down. They're just going to take a little portion down, mm -hmm. uh, right in there. And that's so, the price? Yep, the price is about, I think we figured about 2500 for it. It's something that Jeff's been wanting to get um, for a while on there. Here's, that's what he wrote up about it, but that's pretty much what it does. Is this to be paid by the electrical report? Correct. The yeah, there's budget. It says it's got room in the budget yep. for it. Yeah, he's planning on paying it out of 41 43 So I just need a, a motion if that's what you guys want to do. And Corey wants to do this? Yep. And I'm sure he would have presented it much better than <laughs> I did. <laughs> Assuming if it deals with the safety of our people, it's it is. Yeah. Well, it's and, benefit. and the other thing is, is right now you have to take down the whole block. Right. Like if they have to work on the transmitter, they're <coughs> shutting all these people off. Right. So instead of doing that, everyone supposedly still would be, all the lights would still be on. They're just going to reroute the power to that, that little right. thing right there. I think I've seen them use that when they hit a power pole. Yeah, it would be not the city, but the community. Mm -hmm. so it would be. That'll be. It'll be nice to have right. that. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the purchase of the brake safe for $2,500. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Okay, are we done under... That's it, 40? that we had on the fourth. City Attorney. 
The only thing I have, you guys have under the old business is sales tax. So yeah. yeah. That brings us to the old business. We got a resolution 2016-04 Ohio Townships tap fee. Yep. We presented this to you guys at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you wanted us to table it so that Corey could kind of tell you guys what the distance would be. So at the very bottom, he it's on it's on section B. Yeah. Um, I think before he just had the the outside of the city limits, we would, you know, take a distance and you guys kind of wanted to know, you know, that be more specific on that. So what he put is the water service from the closest water main and from the nearest right of way of such city limits. So if you guys are okay with that, then I just need somebody to approve it. If you're not, then we just need to decide what you guys want there. I make a motion accepted as it is. Second. Have a motion and second on the table. Okay. Okay. So the uh, the next thing you guys had tabled from that last meeting is the pay plan. Um, if you guys remember, Adam had come and uh, kind of talked to you guys about a raise, and there's been some other ones. Um, I finally got it all updated. Then you guys should have a copy of it in your packet. And then when I was updating it, and I was going through it all, I found a brief kind of description of what the pay plan is supposed to do. So I gave you guys that, so you guys kind of had some idea of how they created it, what it's supposed to do, and everything. Um, in the past, they recommended that your employees would be at 80 Five percent of the final medium. That's what's on the top sheet, that spreadsheet. That shows you everyone in blue are the ones that are underneath that 85 final medium after I updated it all. Um, then they also give you the option of doing 75 percent and so then that shows you who is under the 75 percent. It also shows you how much of a raise they would need for, for both. So you guys kind of wanted to see that. Um, there's there's pros and cons to this. Um, some of the places they got they got adjusted where I would think are right. There are other ones towards the lower end of that spreadsheet where there you know you hired them and they're already past the final medium, and that's pretty much because they are ranked so low that their city wage is like ten dollars or nine dollars in that factor. So that brings their final medium down. I don't know if you guys want to change that and kind of go over that um, or if you just want to accept it as is and give the raises and be done with it. The the other option you guys had asked about um, maybe doing a step kind of increase. Um, I don't have the, the background to do that so I asked Nita at the county who she used um, and that's in your packet, and that's that proposal from that Austin Peters group. If you guys wanted to go that route to do to redo the whole structure, then I would pretty much recommend um, talking with them. And what they will do is they will come down, they will interview everybody, um, they will research it on the market level, then they will come back with you guys, and, and it will be a step race. So you would have one step, two step, three step, four step, and it would be all done. Um, it is kind of pricey, in my opinion. There, there are certain parts of that proposal, if you guys wanted to go that route, that we could probably do in-house, like um, doing the employee handbook. I mean, that's pretty much going to be copy and pasting and, and just retyping it. We could probably do that. That would take 30000 off of it. Um, she just listed those things. How much off of it? Uh, 3000 sorry. I thought she said 30000 I did. I did. So, <laughs> on, on this one, is this like what the league... That is exactly what the league has. That's exactly what you guys have used in the past. All I did was update everybody's figures. That's, that's all I did. So instead of using the figures from 2000... They are now the figures of 
Do you think that seems really low on that utility billing clerk? I, I do, personally, but that's just because I know our utility billing clerk. So, I mean, a lot of problems that I found with some of them is they combine the, the city treasurer with the utility billing clerk. What I try to do in that case is I try to just put an NA to because it's not okay. going to be the same. I mean, this is just what they advise. It doesn't mean you guys have to do that. This is just what that program advises you guys to do. You can make adjustments to it. They're saying everybody should be in this. Correct. They're saying that that you want. Of this. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Or you can have them at seventy-five, but they recommend the eighty-five percent. And then if you go across, then it's going to show you. Okay, if you do eighty-five percent, that's how much of an annual increase it's going to be for them. And if you do the 75, then that's how much the 75 uh, is going to be. Is this something that's supposed to be updated yearly? It, you can't really update it yearly because you kind of have to go with the Kansas Wage Report and they don't do it yearly. So, but it should be updated every time the Kansas Wage Report gets updated. Yeah, it should be going in there and someone should be looking up this stuff and, and doing it. So if we went 85% on all of them, it'd be like $19,760 a year yeah. more. <clears throat> Correct. But what about, how does anybody else on this ever get it? Do you go back in and factor in points? I mean, is it... The points stay the same. So what you would do is, when they get their evaluation, they either have to get exceeds expectation or an outstanding. There, there's two. If they get an exceed, it's a certain percentage, and if they get outstanding, it's a certain percentage. And then that's how they get their, their raise. And it's based off of how close they kind of are to that final medium. If they're close to it or they have passed it, then of course they're not going to get as high of raise as somebody that's further away to that final medium. The way, the way those people get kind of reimbursed is when you guys do the COLA raises, that's when if you guys would do like a 2% or a 3% raise, then that's when those that are close to the final median kind of get recompensated because they're going to get more of a COLA raise than the ones that are lower paid. Does that make sense? So if you want an example, it would be so if, like if you guys would look at like the lineman trainee he's sitting his um, current salary is you know sixteen dollars and twenty five cents but his final salary or the medium is eleven dollars and sixteen cents so if he gets exceeds expectations he's going to get a fifty percent raise which is eight cents 
If he gets an outstanding, he's going to get 12 cents because he's passed that final salary. Um, but if you look like at the, if you look at like the street foreman, his is $18. He currently makes $18.25. His final salary is $20.58. If he gets an exceed expectation, he's going to get a 3% raise which is 55 cents because it's going to bring him more to that final salary. Um, and then if he gets outstanding, he gets a 5% raise, which is a 91 cents raise because it's trying to get him to where that final salary should be, if that helps. Well, I know we need to do something, but I'm not really in favor of jumping out and doing all of it in one fatal sweep. Do we have the money to do the 85%? Yeah, you do. But I don't know if some of that, I don't know is this one is probably enough as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 38 cent raise. Oh, yeah, part. that's what I said. That's not. I mean, I, I think some of our people are worth more than just a 38 cent raise. Mm -hmm. I'm not denying that. Like I said, I know we need to do something. I just don't know what we right. need to do. As I said, I'm not really in favor of this proposal either. Like you said, it takes and this is just what the program advised. Like if you guys want to raise her more, you could you could raise you could say no, I'm gonna do this much. If you want to put some of them less, no, I'm gonna do this much. This is just for you guys to see, like to kind of have a uh, yeah. An idea, pretty mm -hmm. much. Unless you guys want to eliminate this and then go to the step raise. And I I really, I don't know if it's going to be better going to a step raise or not. I'm not really up for spending $9,000 to find out. You can use it on raises. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's almost the... Gonna, well, that would be my choice, too, but I mean... You guys did ask, so. For that utility clerk, I mean, I think I would go back to, to my original thing saying at least a dollar. That would be my opinion on it, because I agree with you. I think it's kind of low. You guys might want to look to see how everyone is, is their factory points are, because that the lower you go, the lower your city salary is going to be. That's figured into this. That's why their salary, their final medium, is lower than the the other ones. Because like it ranks the the police officer with the same amount of points as your water maintenance worker and as your street and parks worker. Not saying that, you know, that they don't share some things, but...
last three we hired two were at 12 and one was at 16, right? Mm -hmm. Be the bottom Correct. Three. It's the bottom three or the last three that you've hired, yes. Mm -hmm. So they haven't had any raises other than no, just, just they the are cost of living rate correct, the cents. Correct. But and they are up for their they should be pretty close to their six month evaluation. I think Corey was working on those before he got pulled away. And there's there's some others that, that have been evaluated, but I wasn't sure which which way you guys wanted to go, so I haven't I haven't given them their raise yet because I just wasn't sure which way and I didn't want to have to back it out and then come back. But we will prorate it back to when their anniversary was. We just need to... from the last raises and what everybody's mm -hmm. last raises uh -huh. were. Well, no, you said the lower the factor points, the lower the... The city, the city wage kind of is, the city wage is determined by, uh, you take the highest paying employee, take the middle paying employee, and take the lowest paying employee. Okay. Then they, then it gets factored out to all these points. Every single one of these points has a salary next to it. Once you put those three in, then it goes and averages them all the way down. So what you do is you just look to see, okay, you got 44.1 points, and then you go and you find out what their, their city salary is. You put that in their spreadsheet, and then that is averaged with the public market and the private market to come up with the, the final medium. Comparing... I mean, what other city around here uses this bill? I, I could ask. I don't know too many people that, that still use it. A lot of them use a, a percentage. A lot of them have this step. Um, I know Stafford, they just kind of, they're about ready to redo theirs. I think when I asked her for hers, then I got the ball rolling. But they kind of, theirs was really low, so they just went in and they all sat down and, decided this is what everyone was going to get. We're going to get all these races. Um, Greensburg does a percent. Like if you get outstanding, you get a 3% raise. If you do exceeding, you get a 2%. If you get average, you do a 1% wage. I would have to ask on the listserv to see how many people still use it. Well, me, a percent that would be more fair as well, far as across the board. I was going to say, could you kind of... Maybe. And that still would will further separate your supervisors from your right. other people right. because of correct. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a higher percentage. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And I know that was one of something like this. That's one of Adam's concerns is is that he does get pretty close at the end of the year with his sergeant coming really close to how much he makes. And part of that is because the sergeant can still get overtime where Adam can't. And you guys can do that. You guys can do a, a, I mean, you can eliminate this, and then you can go to just a, a 3% raise, a 2%, 1%. What would the dollar amount be as a total if you went just, say, 3% 3, 3 across the board again? did it not very long ago on the cost of living, correct? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. be 3% of 
three percent. If I did it right, it's about a thousand fourteen more of that thirty-three thousand eight hundred. No, say that, that again. Right. Hold on. <clears throat> well, like for the lineman down there, for the lineman training, he would get an extra one thousand fourteen dollars a year if you guys did a 3% across the board. But not everybody would get that. No, not everybody would get that. Every, it would all change depending on... Well, that's what I was much. wondering, if you could tell me what the total dollar amount would be on that 3%. Yeah. Or if you could just take the total current salaries and take it down 3%, if that would be close enough. <coughs> Um, it'd be about eighteen thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars. That's a three percent raise on that total salary. Eighteen thousand three hundred. Uh -huh. Eighteen thousand three hundred. We might as well go with this eighty-five percent then. It's nineteen seven. I don't really agree yeah, with it because not everybody's only on four people. That's just on, yeah. only on four it's people. It's only on get four it right because oh, yeah. everyone else has already. They're, at. They're already at the 85 okay. percent of the final medium. And, and this, to me, this percentage deal would be more fair in the aspect that, like I said, it still maintains it. Separation. Do you want to do a one-time deal across the board for well, everybody, or do you want to do it based off evaluation? Do a one, two, three percent. No, that was. I said no, do it off evaluation. Did, go to a step system yeah, evaluation. Be, I mean, if their evaluation no isn't, that, that if their supervisor doesn't two. think it's worth it, then why would we? I bet right. Have, so I bet I'd say go to the three percent. Do this percentage and do it off of their evaluations and roll with it. So with this bond number on this yearly total, that yearly one, right. that one's not right. That doesn't have quarters in there. That four hundred. This one. Okay. But does. yours does have mine does have, have mine does have That's fine. And, and your you, number was what? Eighteen thousand three hundred thirteen dollars. Total gross. Total gross six thousand six hundred and ten thousand four hundred and thirty eight dollars and forty cents. Where's where's uh, that's more than fifty three thousand dollars difference. Mm. That's a hundred and seventy thousand dollars difference. Don't make right. For the hundred seventy thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Not quite. Fairly close. Yeah, you're gonna miss a part. Five hundred four hundred sixty-two thousand six hundred twelve to six hundred and ten. Actually, it's over a hundred seventy.
number four and they didn't know that. That number should be right. Mm -hmm. We got 13 employees. That 460. No, we got 15 employees. You do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you got an opening on the water. Yeah, no, you don't have a water <coughs> foreman, but you have two water workers, and one of the water workers isn't on here on your advice sheet. Oh, there's 14 positions there. Three in the office, three on the lineman. You got four. You got another police officer. You got, you should have four police officers. You know, one of the police officers aren't on your advice sheet either. Mm -hmm. Because you got one of your police officers isn't on there, okay. who makes thirty-six thousand, thirty-six thousand seven hundred ninety-five dollars and twenty cents. And then one of the water workers isn't on there, and so that's another twenty-five thousand. You got, you got Champ, yeah. and you got Chris. You got two water workers, but you don't have a waterman foreman. But you, you got, got a guy in streets and parks and maintenance that is oh, yeah. on there. So he's on there. So there's two that are the same because they both make the same money. Oh, okay. But we had one quit. This one. Well, even if you had a dim two salary, we're still way off. No, I think all you need to do is add that one police salary. I think you one. need to add that one police salary in there. And that's it. And then well, what I'm saying was if you still add that to it and you add 18300 you don't come up with $610,000. No. Because and you're going to take 3% of that and that. That 3% of what the total salary increase was going to be $18,300. Right. So if you add that to the 462 plus the the uh, one police officer salary, you're still a long ways off. You're still about yeah, 100000 on off. On mine, <clears throat> there's a street, there's an extra, Steve, there's an extra street and parks person on here. And he's not here anymore. Well, surely he wasn't making 100000 well, was he? No, he was making like twenty seven. Well, so that brings, that brings my total down to five eighty three three ninety eight forty. So if you take that minus it's still $120,000. Yeah, something ain't driving there. <laughs> I think your number's off down there for some reason. Might be. It should be this. Because it should be that right there. There's only 14 people. Unless yours has... No, because you got one, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, we would only have 14 because Justin 14. left. Because Justin left. Let's table this to next meeting. Let her get stuff figured out. You follow me? Thanks, work. I think this is the number you're choosing for here. Yeah. $499,408. We need to make a motion on that? No. Yeah. Okay. Let's say for the next time, if we could know what that was and what the total 3% three three total mm -hmm. would be. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, the last thing on old business is a sales tax increase. And I also introduced a comment and moved it down there. Uh, along with the sales tax increase going on the ballot, I had a guy talk to me about that he thought... Uh, 
uh, might ought to see if we could put it on the ballot to see whether the citizens of St. John would want to sponsor a million, million and a half dollar bond for a, to build a building for a grocery store. I had, I've got mixed feelings about it, but I said I'd put it on the table. I said I'll bring it to council. I can answer that question right away. You can't sell a revenue bond for purposes of a retail or commercial business. Okay, I guess that takes care of that. Too. There are industrial revenue bonds. But I'm not sure an industrial revenue bond would be applicable here. Uh, Carolyn Dunn and I talked about it for about 30 minutes today. I mean, essentially, if you're talking about building a building, either the city's going to own it, okay, and the city can lease it, but it can't buy it through a revenue bond. Um, or um, Marshall's mom was talking about Onega when she was in here last council meeting and then Onega's arrangement is that they had a private individual who had trouble securing uh, financing to, to, to build the building and run a grocery store because of um, the upfront costs they didn't know how to um, collateralize it and everything correctly. So the city entered into an agreement with that person to, to pay that person for purposes of applying to that loan a certain number of dollars each year. And then part of that agreement was business was required to exist for a period of time. Um, if it didn't, then there was an amortization schedule, kind of sliding amortization schedule where they would have to reimburse the city if, for instance, they they decided to no longer run the business. Well, I'm just curious if you were going to enter into that and they can't run the business. Well, what's you're right. They're filing bankruptcy. <laughs> and there's not going to be anything there. There's no. Well, that's what I mean. That's kind of a silly deal because they. And honestly, I I don't. This is how it was explained to me. I right. don't have a copy of that contract. I think somebody was going to work on trying to to get it. Sure. So I don't okay. know what it looks like. But as far as whether the city can. Can, can can sell a bond to build a building. Um, I, I don't think that's possible. I think Carolyn's going to think about it a little longer. The, the uh, there are tons of programs out there for private individuals to do something like that. Uh, but as like I said, as far as the city doing it now, but if, when the, if the city can operate some kind of co-op, okay, like they do in um, in, in in other towns, that may be entirely different. But you're talking about basically building a building and renting it to a company or selling it to a company. You know, I don't know that's different than, than doing industrial revenue bonds where you're, you're building sewers and that kind of thing. Well, I just I think it would have to be explored. I, I guess the, kind of the segue into the sales tax is, is the, the ordinance or resolution you have in front of you is a general purpose sales tax, meaning it's not a sales tax to, for purposes of a grocery store, it's purposes of um, meeting the, the needs, the general services of the city with the idea that it would be used for economic development or for infrastructure. But it's, it could really be used for anything. It's, it's drafted so that it could be used for anything. The difference is it's special Special um, sales tax sunsets after 10 years. Okay. The one I drafted doesn't sunset. So if, if the city wants to do a, a special and reserve the funds for a specific purpose, it would have to sunset for 10 years. So you're talking about the additional cost of, of another election after 10 years if the city wanted to renew that sales tax. I think we, we figured it would raise over 10 years probably $700,000. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't include whatever sales tax would be generated by a new grocery store. And I think if, if, a, if, if a new grocery store comes in and is as successful as Dillon's, you're talking an additional thirty or $40,000. The reason we went general, though, was just so that if we weren't bound, I mean, that money just wasn't sitting there and we couldn't use it for anything else if something had to be happening. If happen you put it no for store, economic right? development and it raises $700,000, you have $700,000 for economic development. Okay. You're right. You couldn't use it for something, something else. But um, and, and the recommendation by the league is that you you do it for a general, okay, 
and then and then you, you through your budgeting process you budget devoted out devoted okay. out. I, I know that there's there's fear that well if if it's just a sales tax increase or for general funding of, of the city that it won't go to where it's it's supposed to go or where it's intended. The way you stop a sales tax is the same way you start a sales tax. Okay, so so there's a process to it. it, it it's, it's not easy to kill. So if, if three years down the road you don't have a grocery store and you, you see no reason to continue to have a sales tax, then you'd have to go through the process of adopting a resolution, putting it on the ballot, and putting it before the voters. Uh, I've never actually seen that happen because... <laughs> Right. You know, you, you don't hear about is, is there a way? I mean, I know we're going to put this in the paper or whatever, advertise it to see if that's going to, if the people want that. But I also think they need to know about that. That, you know, we just can't quit at any time because the grocery store didn't show up. So you're still going to be paying us one percent for the next seven or whatever years. I mean, I think people also need to know that too before they go to vote. I mean, let them know all the ins and outs before they actually vote on whether they want to do that or not. As it's drafting there, there is no sunset. I originally did a draft with a 10-year sunset um, until I talked to with Carolyn about what that would generate. And she didn't think that a 10-year sunset would pay for a building if, if that's what happens. And, and she's right, if you need a million and a half dollars for, for a building, then it's not. It's not going to cover. You built a pretty nice building for $700,000. <laughs> and you know, a big one. It's and my understanding just the coolers <laughs> and installation of coolers is $400,000. Huh? Just the installation and the purchase of coolers is $400,000. Well, yeah, but I mean, just the building itself, you can build a nice building for $700,000 and insulate. The, the other thing is, you know, if you want it on the August 2nd ballot, uh, we probably, the best bet would be to adopt it sometime the end of May to get it published okay, and then it has to go to the county. The county clerk has to do a, a notice um, and that notice has to be published for 21, 21 days prior to the election. But if you, if, you, if you vote on it on August 2nd, it doesn't take effect till January 1 because everything the state has to do to update their computers and provide notice and that kind of thing. But it actually probably won't go into effect till July. No, if we can do if we do it by by August, that that's sufficient. If we if we if it's approved August, votes are canvassed. We get an ordinance adopting it's adopted, establishing the sales tax in September. That should be sufficient. The state says any ninety days. That should be sufficient, so it takes effect on on the first January. Now there there is though a law about if if, if a retailer is not withholding the tax, there's like a grace period. But I think it's only like thirty days. It would go effective. Now, if we wait till November, it's not going to go effective until yeah, April 1. Okay. You know, the, the currently, you know, with with everything that's going with going on with uh, the loss of uh, the store, we don't really have any information other than what we heard from the grocery store committee. But it doesn't seem to be a sense of urgency with. This whole situation, I think we need to change that. Um, I'd like to see a town, another town hall meeting, but unfortunately, we don't have any other information to pass on to anybody. Not at the moment, anyway. I, I'm not sure what the answer is on something like this, but we need to do something on this, or else this town is just going to continue to just go under. The reason why I drafted it as a, as a general purpose sales tax is because we, I can't right now probably draft it any other way because I don't know what all money needs to go into establishing a grocery store, whether that means equipping, whether that means just the building. You know, you're right, because there's so many unknowns, I guess my concern is, you know, if we get to the point where we're in the June and you guys now start saying, we need a sales tax, it's not going on the ballot to November. Now the city can call for a special election between August and November, but because of the way the, 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 the state's quarters happen, it's still not going to go into effect until April. So there's no point in, this, in speeding up that election. 
Well, I'd say we get it. I mean, on the ballot and let the people decide. Oh yeah, I, I it's the fairest way I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for us to sit in here. Are these both the same? Everything we have here. The, the one there's an exhibit. The first part is the resolution. The second part is the exhibit, which is which has got the question, the ballot. My the clerk has the ability to, to change that if she wants to, but um, the county clerk, I mean, because she's the election officer. But that is um, when it gets initially published. That is what I believe should go on the ballot. But I do agree with you, Mark. Before this goes in, um, or bef before we vote, I do think there needs to be a town hall meeting so that the pros and cons both ways can be explained to the people. Great. <clears throat> Instead of like some other elections where we had, you just, yeah. you didn't know what the total yeah, outcome what know. could have been. And we need to answer Because otherwise questions. people wouldn't have voted a lot of the ways they did. So. Right. I mean, I think you need to put it all on the table. Also, and then, Bobby, if you talk to the same person that I spoke with, you know, they were talking about Medicine Lodge. Um, the, the, I believe it's an IGA that is down there, um, something that they had put together, uh, um, and I'm not exactly sure what it, all that happened down there, but um, I think what we need to do is perhaps get a group of uh, people together to go pay a visit someplace that had the same situation that we have and see how they overcame it, kind of take a look at their model, and see what it's something that if it's something that we could do because if we look at someone that is that has done the same thing we could question them on everything they did right and find out what the what works and what doesn't work and if we can do that we can avoid some of the pitfalls that they had encountered if um, you know the right question if you know the right questions and that's the deal right there but we need to get a group of people that comprises of uh, some city council members, the mayor, um, county commissioners, uh, local businessmen, um, just about anyone that we can we can get to go and look at this. Um, the, it's, it's a situation that um, if we let it go too far, then it's going to go past the point of no return, and then that's going to be it. I don't think that's the same individual that might have talked to me. He was supposed to be at the meeting tonight, and he certainly had something come up. And I can visit with Carolyn about that again. I mean, I, her name it, come up in this. In, in our in our discussion, <coughs> the bonds only came up very very short period of time, and I and I by no means am, am a bond expert. So, uh, but that's just my understanding of revenue bonds, and, and the reason is because there were some problems with cities taking out bonds and, and literally turning property over for commercial use and so the legislature changed how that worked and, and I, I for something like this I, I just I just don't know it probably could be structured somehow um, I think you lose kind of the private ownership aspect of it if it's done that way but, uh, is there can you find do a little more research on it, find out maybe bring something anything that could possibly help us with this? And, and I I know the guy was the city attorney for Medicine Live, so I can I can see what they did there. That'd be great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, we don't have to prove this deal till May. You said? No, probably the end of May. You don't have to do it. Okay. Right. I, I guess I want some guidance as to whether. we get that on the agenda and make sure we don't. Mm -hmm. Overlook it, please. As to whether you want to include a sunset in there, whether you want to do one percent. You can do up to two percent. You don't have sales tax now. I don't know if you want to go from zero to two, but I would say one percent. I think we ought to have a sunset on over ten years sunset. Yeah, and that way it gives if it gives I guess the ten year out if, if that's what the people want, mm -hmm. or otherwise it's going to be a huge deal. Yeah, well, so, the same deal as getting it on the ballot get it off the ballot. Yeah, I suppose. But I just, I think I just it might be a little bit easier to get a sunset to get the cake and bring it down. <laughs> I mean, it's one percent, but still. I agree with Troy. I think we need to get, uh, we need to get this information out to people um, and as much other information as we can once it becomes available and we need to be a little more proactive on some of this and by that I'm not saying the council needs to be 
a little more proactive. I mean, as individuals, yes. Um, but we need to start working a little more with uh, the grocery committee and finding out exactly what they are doing. So, I don't know. I don't think they're doing anything because they don't have anything to do. No. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. Where, I mean, you can't bring a new business or store into town without a building. Yeah. Hmm. Dylan's just taking everything out of the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe they'll take everything out and turn it back over to the lodge. But what happens then? Well, at least you have a building. You got a building, but it's going to cost more to bring that building up to ADA. I really don't see anybody coming in here with, you know, unless they've got deep pockets. I don't really see anybody coming in here and doing that. It's going to cost a lot of money. How Probably not $1.5 million. <laughs> I thought a lot about this. also don't know what you could get it bought for. Exactly. I thought a lot about this whole situation. And I don't think we can support the grocery store. <clears throat> and uh, I think that we've got one avenue to look at, and that's proceed to Dollar General to see if we can get them to put in a, expand that to a fresh market, which and I've been told that it, it won't happen. I don't know. They, they can't expand yeah. because of their lease contract. Is that coming from a manager somewhere, or is that coming? From the owner of the corporation. That's coming from somebody that has spoke to the owner of the corporation. Mm -hmm. But because of their lease, they can't expand. That doesn't mean that when their lease is over, that they wouldn't wouldn't do it. Or if somebody wants to buy out their lease and, and do it, it then they yeah. can do that. But they said they would not. They could make it a Dillon Dollar General Plus, which means they would have more coolers in there, but it won't be a full-grown grocery store. I had one more thing. After you adopt the resolution, what you're doing is you're proposing to the electors in the, in the city to pass the sales tax. If they approve and after the votes are canvassed, we have to come back here and adopt an ordinance. That ordinance has to pass by two-thirds vote right away here. Um, the city does bear the cost of the election. Um, of course, there's some savings given the fact that it, it happens during a regular scheduled election period. And I don't know if it would on it. You can visit with the city clerk mm -hmm. or the county clerk and find out how much that would cost to put a question on the ballot. Um, but it would seem that um, um, if, if, if the city wants to head down that road, that the council needs to be aware that it would take... Um, Four votes to pass the ordinance for the sales tax to go in effect, even after it's approved by the voters. Any more discussion? Thanks, <coughs> So, do you guys want it on the agenda for next meeting, or do you just want to wait till May 17th? Or do you want to just keep putting it on? Yeah, just keep putting it on. Okay. Keep putting it on. want to touch base, you know, a quarter into the, the year, uh, make sure we're doing things like you guys all asked and everybody's approved and kind of see what you guys have heard. Um, we've had a few issues just from um, individuals I don't feel probably want us down here, but other than that, it's gone really well. So uh, we just want to kind of check with you guys, make sure, you know, you guys have the same, kind of the same situation or hearing the same thing. So. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard a word. Okay. Anybody else? The only thing that I have heard is, and I'll, I'll quote, I'll paraphrase, um, those poor guys come, get out of their vehicle, dump the trash, 
go back in their vehicle, buckle back up, and drive on to the next and do it over again. <laughs> they, they're, they're sympathetic to you is what I'm trying to sure. say. No, so. we just, you want our done right, you do it yourself. So right. Just, that's kind of what we're going to stick with you guys, especially until we get things all ironed out. So mm -hmm. it's, it's been, like I said, it's been a little bit rough. We've had a few complaints that were just completely unnecessary, unjustified, but, you know, we're taking care of it. We're dealing with that and, and move forward, so... I just want to make sure you guys hadn't heard any, or you guys personally had no no, no. issues or complaints with us. So. No, I'll say that I haven't had anybody complain. Don't have you got any so. through nope. the city? Well, we had one, and they took care of it. And in my opinion, I agree with Grant. They just don't want them here. So I, said, I didn't there, have there, any. Yeah, there's some of them that are that have ties. I didn't to, hold any weight to, to it. people sure. pretty easy to read. So, but um, we do have a new truck we've had bought for about a month now, just trying to get it up here from Dallas. Um, it is about three foot shorter lengthwise, and it does set a little higher to help with some of your guys' little dips. You know, I noticed, you know, Stafford County, and of course our lower Sloan trucks, they drag a lot, and it kind of tears up, you know, the entranceways through some of your alleys. So this will hopefully eliminate a lot of that. So hopefully the end of next week we'll have have it here and all the, the new equipment on it to be able to come, you know, go to work. So you guys will see it. It's kind of goofy, but it'll it'll fit the city real well as far as. And so you're you're goofy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're, they're long enough to blow enough, you know, some of those alley crossings are, are a little bit tricky with these trucks, so <laughs> this one will make it really easy to get around. Anybody got any questions for Grant? <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks, Troy. I appreciate that. I'm just trying to clarify it for you, man. I'm sorry. The city's not good. Your truck is going to look a little bit good. It'll, it'll fit, the, fit the application. Oh, the city right. job is going to come out next week, and it's going to say city council is goofy. Yeah. Yeah. That's my headline. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. What's the bringing of the business? So, so moved. Huh? Second. All in favor. Motion.